In a recent video, link on the screen and in the description, Sabina Hossenfelder explains the difference between two types of energy gain in nuclear fusion. In general, a system has a gain factor denoted by the capital letter Q, defined as the energy out divided by energy in. There are two types of gain factor in fusion research. The fusion or plasma gain, Q plasma, is the energy given out by the nuclear reactions divided by the energy which reaches the fuel in its plasma state. Then there is the total electrical gain of a power plant, Q total. This must be greater than one for a fusion power plant to be more than just an expensive heater. Q total is necessarily much smaller than Q plasma because much of the fusion energy generated would have to be fed back into many power hungry systems required to maintain these star like conditions for fusion. I must correct Sabina here, insofar as technical literature very frequently uses just the letter Q for what she calls Q plasma. This is mostly because no nuclear fusion experiment has ever come close to producing net electrical energy, and therefore the heat exchange infrastructure, turbines and so on needed to produce power have never been built into a device. Outside of theoretical predictions, Q total has always been zero so far. Sabina explains how using these two terms for gain interchangeably leads to misrepresentation of fusion progress by experiments up to now, and far overstates how close future machines will come to their ultimate goal, a working fusion power plant. I totally agree with this sentiment. Spokespeople for fusion energy almost exclusively talk about Q plasma to news outlets, who then unquestioningly go on to report that clean energy is just around the corner. This misrepresentation is worse for the startups attracting millions in venture capital with a business plan which often reads like a meme. Produce a funky new gadget, achieve a gain, almost always just Q plasma greater than one, triple question mark, profit. The rest of the video just gives more examples of misuse of Q plasma figures without a discussion of why it is such an important metric and concludes with Sabina arguing that raising Q total should be the singular priority of fusion research. It seems like a no-brainer that experiments should be laser-focused on improving their electrical efficiency, right? Wrong. This thinking misses some very important context. All the fusion experiments so far have been exactly that, experiments. They need all of their systems to have the flexibility to vary how they operate. You may remember experiments at high school or university where you had to vary a voltage from 1 to 10 and record the results. Having a variable power supply is much more inefficient than a fixed one. For example, every modern magnetic confinement device has power input through electromagnetic waves, from radio frequency up to microwaves. The resonant frequency of the plasma depends on experimental conditions, which are intentionally varied. The power generators, antennas and so on are much less efficient than they could be if only they had to deliver power around a particular frequency as would happen on a full reactor, when the optimal plasma conditions would be fixed. Sabina points to the National Ignition Facility as having egregiously energy inefficient lasers. And this is true. The development of super efficient, high repetition rate diode pumped solid state lasers is running in parallel to experiments at the NIF. This technology was even considered for the NIF but was not mature enough. Should the leadership of the NIF have waited for these lasers to be developed before breaking ground? No. This facility was built for stewardship of American nuclear weapons, not just for fusion research. In addition to both of these tasks, it is also doing completely unrelated fundamental science research, such as making miniature proxies for supernovae. All of these things can be done with inefficient lasers, which would make Q total prohibitively low for a practical reactor. So I would argue against taking quick shortcuts to raise Q total for the sake of it, instead of pursuing the physics challenges, which is what's being done now. Making the rest of the plant efficient before sorting out all the issues of an active thermonuclear plasma would be like designing a super efficient set of wheels for a car before finding out if the engine could ever work at all. So just how efficient have the monetary investments into raising Q plasma been? Up to the turn of the century, the fusion gain was being raised exponentially, doubling and doubling and doubling with time. Some have even proposed an equivalent to Moore's law for exponential increases in fusion performance. This all hit a snag when the size and complexity of experiments rose from the scale of a national lab to a massive international collaboration. ITER is the next generation machine being built now. It will see a 50 times increase in Q plasma over the joint European Taurus, the current record holder, which in turn was a huge step above previous devices. A plan for ITER was originally signed into being by Reagan and Gorbachev, but ground on the eventual facility was only broken decades later, after a lot of hot air and not so much hot plasma had been generated. Had it been completed in a timely manner, 
even a full 20 years after its inception. We would already be a single factor of 50 or even a factor of 10 step away from a practical reactor. The delays have made it a contentious issue amongst researchers and YouTube commenters alike. On the inertial fusion side, the NIF, with just one set of antiquated lasers, has made big strides in Q-plasma, reportedly doubling it and then improving it again by a factor of 8. A few more steps like that would bring Q-plasma to reactor-relevant levels, though the inertial approach has many more challenges which I will discuss in a future video. The sky is the limit for Q-plasma, which could theoretically be infinite for a device like a Stellarator, that is to say that you could get high power output with zero energy input to the plasma. For tokamaks and inertial fusion, Q-plasma would be finite, but would feasibly go over 100. In actual fact, it should be possible to run a profitable reactor at a Q-plasma of just 10 or 20. MIT have begun developing the ARC, Affordable, Robust, Compact, Reactor Proposal. The baseline design envisages a Q-total exceeding 1, meaning true electrical breakeven, at Q-plasma just under 4, and in turn a Q-total of 4 at a Q-plasma around 14. The reason for this high level of performance are many cutting-edge technologies, chief among them high-temperature superconductors. Nonetheless, the highest stated priority of MIT and their spin-off company Commonwealth Fusion Systems remains the demonstration of a high Q plasma. This they intend to do by building the soon as possible arc or spark tokamak. Originally expected to produce a Q plasma of just two, they now expect it to go as high as 10. Take this figure with a grain of salt, but it shows the kind of progress which can be made in the fusion gain. Though again, Spark will be an experiment with many inefficient systems and probably no electrical generators. One other factor for obtaining such a high Q total, which is rarely discussed, is something called I mode, short for improved confinement. Rarely observed or even attempted outside of MIT, who discovered it on their Alcator C mod tokamak. Operating your reactor in I mode doesn't depend at all on how efficient your generators or antennas are, only that heating power is delivered to the plasma in a very particular set of conditions. Alcator C mod was outclassed by far in terms of its potential Q total, but it had the experimental freedom to identify this improved confinement mode. By Sabina's logic, this experimental machine would have been irrelevant to raising Q total directly, and so it would never have been funded in the first place. In summary, Q-plasma is the one factor in which fusion can make the most progress, and there are good reasons why researchers are concentrating on raising this parameter first before solving other engineering challenges. Just remember, Q-plasma will ultimately need to be significantly larger than one for a fusion power plant, especially when reading a clickbaity news source. 